And we are back, everybody, to Skyrim, where we'll talk to this guy about the two leaders meeting up and whatnot. See what's going on with them. Uh, that's all I can remember that we're supposed to do. I'll probably do side quests too, because we're getting a lot in the main storyline. I want to get some side quests done as well. All right, what do we got? What do you got? So you've done it. The men of violence are gathered here in these halls whose very stones are dedicated to peace. I should not have agreed to host this council. The Greybeards have no business involving ourselves in such matters. Don't worry, I'll get them to agree to peace. It's the only way to get... Yes, sure. yes. Which is why I allowed this violation of all our traditions. But regrets are pointless. Here we are. Take your seat at the council table, and let us see what wisdom we can find among these warriors of Skyrim. Alright, where's my seat? Can I get a seat in here? This important meeting that's over there somewhere. Alright. So Let us in or not. Right, who do you got here? So we got some person, Jarl of whatever, General Tullius, Jarl, oh, this guy. Oh shit, that girl. Oh, I crashed your party. Got Alfred Stormcloak and that guy only on this side. Okay, well then. Oh, we got the Greybeards coming in. Anyone else coming in? Who's this? As, oh, it's boring. Okay. Oh, and she's coming. Okay. Well, I'll take my seat. Everyone seems to be all here. Take your now that everyone is here. Please take your seats so we can begin. On oh, everyone, sit down. I hope that we have all come here no. in the spirit. No, you insult us by bringing her to this negotiation. Your chief Talos hunter. I have every right to be at this negotiation. I need to ensure that nothing is agreed to here that violates the terms of the White Gold Concordat. She's part of the Imperial delegation. You can't dictate who I bring to this council. Please. If we have to negotiate the terms of the negotiation, we will never get anywhere. Perhaps this would be a good time to get the Dragonborn's input on this matter. By Izmir's beard, the nerve of those Imperial bastards, eh? To think that I would sit down at the same table with that. Thou more bitch, <laughs> she walks or I do. Oh, you're right, the Thalmor have no business here. What's the harm? Besides, Helius doesn't really want her here in here either. Maybe so, but bringing her here is a deliberate provocation. Talius needs to know I won't be pushed around. I agree. This is set the tone of the whole no negotiation. Elduin should go. Let Talius have his way on this. He'll have to give ground later. Hmm. It feels like a mistake to me. But I'll bow to your judgment on this. But she is to observe. Nothing more. We are not negotiating with her. Is that clear? Elfric, why so hostile? After all, it's not the Thalmor that's burning your farms and killing your sons. She's supposed to be on our side? No, exactly. No. Not this time. Now that that's settled, may we proceed? I have something to say first. Here we go. The only reason I agreed to attend this council was to deal with the Dragon Menace. There's nothing else to talk about. Unless the Empire is finally ready to renounce its unjust claim to rule over the free people of Skyrim. I knew he wouldn't be able to resist. A temporary truce to allow the Dragonborn here to deal with the dragons, nothing more. I consider even talking to the Empire a generous gesture. Are you done? Did you just come here to make speeches, or can we get down to business? Yes. Let's get this over with. Are we ready to proceed? 
Jarl Ulfric. General Tullius, this council is unprecedented. We are gathered here at the Dragonborn's request. I ask that you all respect the spirit of High Hrothgar. Do your best to begin the process of achieving a lasting peace in Skyrim. Who would like to open the negotiations? Yes, let's get down to it. We want control of Markar. That's our price for agreeing to a truce. So that's why you're here, Ulfric? You dare to insult the Greybeards by using this council to advance your own position? Jarl Elisif. General, this is outrageous. You can't be taking this demand seriously. I thought we were here to discuss a truce. Elisif, I said I'd handle it. Ulfric, you can't seriously expect us to give up Murkarth at the negotiating table. You hope to gain in council what you've been unable to take in battle, is that it? I'm sure Jarl Ulfric does not expect something for nothing. Yes, that'd be entirely out of character. Want in return. Wait, General, you don't intend to just hand over Markarth to that... traitor? This is how the Empire repays us for our loyalty? Enough. First, let's be clear. This council wasn't my idea. I think it's a waste of time. You are a traitor to the Empire, and deserve a traitor's death. But I at least will negotiate in good faith. Since we're all here at your request, I'd like to hear what you think Markarth is worth. Uh, how about Riften? Dawnstar seems like a fair deal, fair trade. Ah, oh, Dawnstar, Riften. Dawnstar is that one place. How about Riften? Let's go with Riften. Mm. The Rift would help secure our communications with Cyrodiil and threatened Ulfric's southern flank. You heard the man, Ulfric. We've made you a fair offer. Are you serious about these talks, or are you just here to posture? I expected better from you, Dragon Boy. I came here in good faith, and now it seems you held the Empire at every turn. As for you, General Tullius, I see now that Garmar was right. Talking to the Empire is just as useless as ever. If you think you can hold Markar, you're as deluded as your Emperor when he signed away our freedom to Lothalmor. Skyrim will never again bow to your false Empire. Let's go, Garmar. I should have listened to you in the first place. You always were a fool, Alfred. You're no better at diplomacy than you are in the battlefield. Stop! Are you so blind to our danger that you can't see past your pity disagreement? Here you sit arguing about nothing, while the fate of the land hangs in the balance. Is he with you, Delphi? If so, I advise you to tell him to watch his tongue. He is with me. And I advise you both to listen to what he has to say before you do anything rash. Don't you understand the danger? Don't you understand what the return of the dragons means? Alduin has returned, the World Eater. Even now, he devours the souls of your fallen comrades. He grows more powerful with every soldier slain in your pointless war. Can you not put aside your hatred for even one moment in the face of this mortal danger? A very pretty speech. But what does Shut it have up. to do with that? If he's right about Alduin. We both have just as much to lose here, Tullius. Remember that. Now, back to the matter at hand. Don't hand me a mug of sheep's piss and call it meat. These terms are still not acceptable. I'm sure you have something in mind. Damn right we do. You surrender Falkreath to us. Sidgir steps down, and Dengir of Stun resumes the Yarship. Where do these demands stop, Ulfric? Do you expect me to surrender all of Skyrim? It seems I have no choice but to let the Dragonborn decide. Although I'm starting to doubt your fairness. What say you, Dragonborn? Ah, uh, I agree with that part should turn over. Uh, that part doesn't need to give up any more territory. Ah, uh, sure, why not? Spoken like a true son of Skyrim. I suppose that's the fairest deal we're likely to get. It seems we may have an agreement. 
Jarl Ulfric, General Tullius. These are the terms currently on the table. Markarth will be handed over to Ulfric's forces. Jarl Igmund will step down, and Thangvor Silverblood will become the Jarl of Markarth. The Stormcloaks will withdraw from the rift, allowing Imperial troops unhindered access. Jarl Leila Lawgiver will step down, and Maven Blackbriar will become the Jarl of Riften. Falkreath will be turned over to Ulfric, and Dengir of Stoon will return as Jarl. You both agree to this? The Sons of Skyrim will live up to their agreements, as long as the Imperials hold to theirs. What about you, Alison? Are these terms to your liking? Speak up! I'm sure General Tullius is waiting to do your bidding. I have nothing to say to that murderer. General, you've proven yourself a good friend to Skyrim. I continue to trust that you will do your utmost to safeguard our interests. Thank you, Jarl Elisif. I appreciate your loyalty. The Empire can live with these terms, yes, for a temporary truce, until the Dragon Menace is dealt with. After that, Ulfric, there will be a reckoning. Count on it. Come on, Dalmar. We have a lot of work to do. Giving up Markarth is a heavy price for this truce, Dragon. I hope it was worth it. Jarl Balgruf. I assume you are familiar with the Dragonborn's plan? Yes, I'm ready to do my part. Just say the word, and my men will help you spring this trap. But the difficulty remains, how to lure a dragon to Dragon's Reach at all? Well, that's an excellent question. You haven't overlooked that little detail, have you? Ah, I believe I can be a I anticipated. While you were arranging this meeting, I was busy in the library of Skyhaven Temple. An unguessed trove of lost lore. But the important thing is that the Blades recorded many of the names of dragons they slew. Cross-referencing this with Delphine's map of dragon burial sites, I believe I've identified one of the dragons that Alduin has raised up. How does that help us? Uh, don't you see? The names of dragons always three words of power shouts by calling the dragon with a voice he will hear you wherever he might be why would he come when He's called compelled to, but dragons are prideful by nature and loath to refuse a challenge your voice in particular is likely to intrigue this dragon after your victory over Alter. I think it's very likely that he will be unable to resist investigating your call. So what's the dragon's ah, name? Indeed. I'm no master of the voice like these worthy gentlemen. But it is written here in the scroll. Oda Winged Snow Hunter. 